So for lab 8, 9, and 10, we're going to use the same setup. Uh, we have here a red laser source. Um, right here is the holder for our many slits. Um, we're going to use a bunch of different settings on this guy. We have single slits, double slits, and multiple slits. Uh, the variable slits is also lab 11. So uh, sliding this in, it's really easy. It clicks right in place when you get it in the right setting. Um, Important to note where you place the slits relative to the detector is very important, but you should record the distance between your light source and your slits and the detector all in one. Um, we are really only worried about the, hor the, the distance this way um, between things. Um, however, the alignment of the laser is kind of a tricky matter. If you're not getting any patterns to appear on your detector even before collection, um, it's important to use these little knobs to adjust mostly the vertical level because you have your detector moving horizontally so we have a degree of freedom there but up and down is very important to make sure we're centered on uh, the collector. On the collector side uh, we'll move over here. We have a couple different settings for aperture. Um, most importantly is that we can get a clear distinct pattern without saturating the detector. So the detector uh, uses intensity as a uh, percentage of total intensity allowed. It's got a, you know, a cap to how much it will allow. It won't take over 100% of that intensity. Um, so if you're seeing your graphs spiking past 100% intensity or getting to, you know, 99.3%, you're probably cutting off your peaks and you should reduce the aperture size. Um, so between 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and like one time we went to 0 0.1, um, all those are totally good. Um, on your high sensitivity light sensor, um, on top of it are some settings for uh, the microwattage allowment. Um, 1, 10, 100 microwatts are all different settings for the allotment. Um, one setting is pretty much fine. That's the in percentage of what it's taking. So if you have it at 100 watts, you're going to get less resolution than if you have it at a 10 microwatt setting. Um, the controller for the light sensor, um, specifically just the step motor that's going to take it from the right side to the left side and back again across our diffraction pattern, is this chunk of stuff sitting right here. Um, so basically, on this thing, there's a bunch of little dials that are controlled with an optical screwdriver, which control settings on it, but aren't as important um, as the controls for it. Um, on this model, as it's built for us, um, on the back end side, it's kind of hard to see, are these little tabs, which are what trigger it to stop and start. And uh, these, these tabs, as you can see on this side, it's already hit that tab, so it won't continue to go to the right. When that tab is pressed, in order to get the motor to be ready, back up on top here is a nice little red button. Pressing that gets the motor ready. Here is a switch, clockwise, counterclockwise. That changes the direction of which way your detector is going to move. Um, start is your start button, obviously. The stop button is actually the reset, and the stop button doesn't really do much. Um, so if you're working with it and you hit the stop button and it's like making weird noise, you just hit the reset and it'll fix itself. Um, the mode is set up to run all the way across, and we take uh, a sample in one complete fluid passing of the detector across. Alright, so for labs 8, 9, and 10, we're going to use Logger Pro to collect all of our data. Um, and when we open it up, it goes to the correct page. We just got to give it a second. So we're going to have a graph here of our intensity versus our position of the uh, the light detector, um, but we need to change our sample rate first uh, because if we don't change our sample rate we weren't getting good data. So we go ahead and go and change it to minutes um, for duration and then our sample rating we changed to be about a thousand samples per minute, uh, which worked out well for us for most of the slits. Uh, you might have to change it for a few. Once that's all changed and we have our position set to zero, uh, which can be changed through uh, our zero sensor calibrations, but ours is already there. Uh, we can go ahead and run it. Except you might want to uh, hit collect first. Okay, so first, should have hit collect. So we can start collecting our data, and then we want to run it the proper way. And we should start to see some little peaks. 
Then once the sensor gets towards the middle, that's when we'll see our large peaks. Alright, and once our sensor stops, we can stop collecting data. And then for our graphs, uh, as you can see, our peak is only up here just over 60. So what we can do is we can change the height of our graph. Uh, let's just change it to 70 here, and then you can get a better picture of your graph.